Here we will draw the innervation of the leg and foot. Label the top of the page from left to right as thigh, leg, and foot. Indicate that the leg and foot is innervated by the sciatic nerve supplied by L4 to S3. Now draw the popliteal fossa, which is the depression behind the knee, and the fibular neck, which resides near the top of the lateral leg bone. Next, show that the common perineal nerve leaves the sciatic nerve, wraps around the fibular neck, and then divides into the deep perineal nerve, which innervates the muscles of the anterior leg and dorsum of the foot, and the superficial perineal nerve, which innervates the muscles of the lateral leg. Now show that the tibial nerve continues straight down through the posterior leg to innervate the muscles of the posterior leg and plantar foot. Next, let's show a few key perineal innervated muscles. Show that the deep perineal nerve innervates tibialis anterior, L4 to L5, which provides foot dorsiflexion. Then show that the superficial perineal nerve innervates peroneus longus, L5 to S1, which provides foot eversion. And now also show that the deep perineal nerve innervates extensor digitorum brevis, L5 S1, which extends the middle three toes. Injury to the common perineal nerve, or either of its divisions, is an important cause of foot drop. Lastly, let's show two key tibial nerve innervated muscles. First, indicate the gastrocnemius, S1, S2, which provides foot plantar flexion. Then include the tarsal tunnel, which is the medial entry zone of the tibial nerve through the ankle into the foot. Indicate that within the tarsal tunnel, the tibial nerve gives off the plantar nerves, which innervate the plantar intrinsic foot muscles, S1 to S3. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a form of distal nerve entrapment. This concludes our diagram.